Hey guys, yesterday I got an email requesting that I do a video on Crusader. It's a uh, two column layout for file management on your server. And I've done other videos similar to this, uh, but then again, this is a, uh, a special request for Crusader. I did some research, I did, I looked at several different polls or versions or whatever of Crusader yesterday. And it took me a little while to find this one to get it to work. Um, but I did find one, it's called, it's from a developer called Ben Hex. Uh, this is his version or her version of Crusader. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here we are on the Ben Hex Arch Crusader uh, hub.docker.com page, and you can see that there uh, are some notes here. Uh, here is just a, a generic uh, build file. Uh, below that, they've got an example uh, where they've actually kind of filled in some of those blanks. Uh, I made it uh, a bit more user readable, so you kind of know what goes where. Um, I will say though that uh, not much of this is going to help um, because we don't want to do it in a command or in, like in a in a Docker command uh, in, in PuTTY or SSH. We actually want to do this in a stack. So I went ahead and rewrote this as a stack. So uh, definitely check out the blog post uh, link down below where you can find the stack that I created to make this work. Uh, also, there's a link down there that you're gonna need in order to access your server or your, your Crusader once everything is set up and running. So uh, the blog post linked in the description is very important, especially for this uh, video. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually jump over here to Portainer uh, right here, and I'm going to click on add a stack. Uh, then I'm going to come down to my notes in this other window and I'm going to copy some stuff and I'm going to paste that right in there and then uh, we'll go ahead and give this a name. So again, I'm going to run through some of this. Uh, we're, we're going to change even less than normal on this one. So uh, basically the first six lines, uh, pretty standard stuff. Uh, version 2.2, again, if you're running in swarm mode, you may have to change this to version three. Uh, otherwise this should work in just a standard configuration. Uh, below that, of course, services will be Crusader. The image we're gonna use, like I mentioned, is Ben Hex's uh, Arch Crusader. We're gonna name it Crusader for the container name. We're gonna run this one as privileged. Uh, we're gonna give this a bit more, uh, a, a bit more clout on the server as far as applications are concerned. We're gonna run this with an escalated uh, privileged mode so that it can do a bit more. Uh, below that, the environment, the PUID and PGID, um, instead of using the, normally we would use the PUID and PGID of the admin account for your portainer, uh, this time we're gonna run this as root. Uh, this is especially important to know because when things are run as root, they kind of get privileged to do whatever uh, you tell them to do. So you're less likely to run into, uh, hey, don't do that, or hey, you don't have those privileges. We're running this as root. So if you go in and you accidentally delete a file, there's not going to be anything to stop you from doing that. So uh, something to be aware of there. Uh, the UMask set is for uh, setting privileges uh, when you create a file. Uh, temporary folder, uh, you can leave that as it is. Uh, the volumes, so the first line here for volumes is just going to be a configuration uh, folder volume. Uh, this is where I would normally, in other videos, I will have something set up. Uh, let's see, in uh, Open Media Vault. So let's, oops, let's go over here real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about there. Uh, oh, that was wrong. There we go. All right, so of course, normally I would come over here to shared folders, um, and then I would find a, my configuration file, or folder rather, this is something I created when I first set up Open Media Vault, uh, so that I could put all of my applications configuration files in uh, just one location. So I created a configuration folder. Uh, I also shared it on the network uh, on SMB CIFS, um, it's, you'll want to make sure that it's enabled and then you'll go over to shares and uh, share that as well. Um, yeah, so, uh, there's some other stuff in here that we're going to take a look at as well. Uh, also, if you don't have the absolute path for this configuration file here, uh, or this configuration folder, you can hover over any of these headers, click the drop down, go to columns and toggle absolute path on and off. Uh, so you'll want to toggle that on so that you can have access to this. So all I did was I copied this line uh, and I pasted it in right here, uh, but then I appended it with my Crusader uh, just so that it would have its own special folder for just its files. So that's the configuration file or folder line. Uh, below that, this is for setting the time zone. Uh, so go ahead and just leave that alone. Below that though, I I've mounted a couple of folders. Um, 
by default, if you run this without these, or if, if you were to, let me just delete this. If you were to just run this like it is, like it shows on the screen right now, you would only have access to your boot drive, uh, whatever, whatever drive your operating system is on. You would only have access to that. But if you wanted to be able to have access to, say, uh, a separate folder where your configuration files are or uh, where you've got other applications or things like that, uh, what you'd want to do then, oops, let's just go back to here. You'd want to paste at least one of these lines in here. Uh, so this first line here, uh, again, this may look familiar, this uh, SRV uh, dev disk by label files. Uh, again, hold on, sorry. I have a new kitty and she thinks it's important to be on my desk as much as possible. Um, so we're training her not to do that. Okay, so back to this. Uh, in order to have uh, access to uh, your, your files on a different drive, um, this like this config file or config folder, for instance, I keep saying file, this config folder is on a separate drive. I did that on purpose so that as I'm building files or building applications or whatever, or installing applications, it won't take up my main drive. Everything will get put on a secondary drive. So in order to get access to that, again, I copied this line right here, uh, just without the config, just this SRV dev disk by label files. And I mounted that to the MNT folder but I appended it with my files. And I'll show you that uh, once we actually get this launched. Also to, to kind of take it a bit further, I also mounted my config folder under MNT slash my conf files. So like my configuration files. I did two separate mounts there to actually demonstrate kind of how this works. Uh, below that we've got ports 5900 and ports 6080. Um, we're only going to be using port 6080 for this, and I'll show you why here in a moment. But, um, and then below that, restart unless stopped, pretty standard stuff there. Uh, so again, all we've got to do at this point is go down here and click on deploy the stack, uh, and we'll give this a minute to run. It may take a little while to run, uh, but when it does, we'll come back and take a look at what the next steps are. Okay, so that took a little while, a little while nor uh, longer than normal anyway. So let's go ahead and open that up and we'll take a look here. Uh, it's up and running, so we can go ahead and take a look at the logs. Uh, this one's a little weird. Uh, we'll just kind of want to wait until this settles down and isn't doing as much before we kind of move on to the next step. Um, that shouldn't take too long here though. All right, so here are some notes for you. Um, so basically this is uh, what I copied into uh, the stack. That's the stack that I just copied in there. Uh, below that is uh, what we're actually going to use for uh, accessing the server or accessing Crusader rather. So uh, basically you're gonna put in uh, your server IP at the beginning, and then you're gonna put in the VNC port here. This is that 6080 that I said we were gonna use. Um, then we're gonna access this on VNC, uh, and then the remote host will be uh, the server IP, which again is the 192, in my case, this dot .238. And again, the VNC port, again, like I mentioned, is the 6080. So I've actually got this typed out right here. Of course, again, this will be in uh, the blog post linked in the description down below. So don't think you've got to try to figure out what all is going on right there. So we're going to go ahead and paste this over here. Okay, because this is our first run, we're going to get a little kind of a startup welcome screen here. Uh, it's going to say welcome to Crusader, and that's fine. We can click that, and then it's going to take us through and tell us uh, some of the stuff that we've got enabled or don't have enabled uh, that will kind of give us uh, the ability to do certain things. Um, like all of this is fine. This is enabled. But when we come over to here, I'm not sure why, um, it's saying that some of these um, aren't enabled, like RAR. We don't have RAR installed, that's fine. Uh, we don't have RPM, we don't have dpackage. Um, so there's some of these that um, we would need to install in order to have access to some of those uh, abilities. Like I said, RAR, uh, dpackage, those kinds of things would have to be installed in order for these to show up as enabled. So uh, it's just kind of showing that. So we go ahead and click OK there. Uh, once this is done, uh, it, once we've gone through those two screens, it'll take us through here for some different uh, settings and things like that that we can adjust if we want to. Uh, I have not dug through this. I'm not entirely sure everything that's in here. Um, so if you want to dig through that, have at. I haven't found any need for it, but you might if you want to get more in depth with Crusader. Uh, once we're done with that, we can go and click on close. And just like that, 
so here we are. We can see that we're on our uh, root drive, uh, our main boot drive here. This is 16.8 gigs. Okay, so uh, as I was editing this, I noticed um, that I said it was like 16.8 gigs. It clearly says 18.3. I promise I'm not on drugs. I don't know what happened there. Um, but you'll see what size your drive is there, uh, rather than whatever I just made up in my head when I looked at that screen. Uh, 24 gigs free, that's how I know that we're on the root drive of my device. Um, so if we go up a couple of folders here, I, again, you can see that we've got access to absolutely everything here. Uh, if we go into the MNT folder here, uh, if you remember, uh, I mounted two separate uh, areas here. Let me come down to here. Remember, I, I, I did uh, just the, the files, the root uh, of my files, my, my other hard drive. And then I also did a configuration uh, folder mount. And I mounted those in my files and my conf files. And here you can see my files and my conf files. So if I go to my files, you'll see config, which is uh, where all my configuration folders are. Uh, home, music, and torrents. Uh, if I open up music, you can see from previous videos, there's the music that I had in there. Uh, torrents, those are in there. Uh, my home, I don't think there's anything in there. Uh, but the configuration, again, it's got my Crusader in there. That's the one that we just launched. We're actually, that's the configuration folder for the container that we're looking at right now. Uh, so let's actually go back a couple of layers here and let's take a look at my conf files. And you'll notice that that mounts straight to, again, the folder where our configuration files are for this container. So that's why I put two of those uh, mount points in there was to show you kind of how that works, maybe uh, demonstrate it a little bit more clearly than I could possibly explain it at 545 in the morning. So, um, so that is how you can get in there. Uh, again, if you wanted to, uh, again, just to kind of show you this, uh, we can create a new folder. We'll call this dbtech.txt. And we'll say, hi, uh, this is a test. And we'll click save and everything's saved just fine. You can see that it's got 20 bytes of data there. Uh, if I take that out and I click save, uh, here now you can, oops, save. Um, it's still got some data in there. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. Um, sort of, yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Sorry, again, it's five o'clock, 5.45 in the morning. I haven't had any coffee yet, man. Give me a break. Anyway, so that's how you can mount uh, both your root drive as well as additional uh, mount drives, uh, mount points, additional hard drives, whatever, um, in Crusader so you can have access to them. Okay guys, there you go. There is how to install uh, the Ben Hex version of Crusader. Uh, again, I tried several different versions of Crusader uh, as I was going through this and each one of them had its own little problem that made it not work uh, basically at all. At least I couldn't get it to work. Maybe I was missing something, I don't know. But I got this one to work. So this is the one I wanted to share with you so you could get in and use Crusader if you wanted to do that. So. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, everything that I needed to say as far as Crusader is concerned. Uh, of course, the obligatory stuff had it out here. Uh, one, if you want to uh, help the channel, uh, there's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, the first way, of course, is by giving a thumbs up. That would help me out a bunch. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of content, of course, you can get subscribed uh, so you can be notified when this new content comes out. Uh, I do try to release content about three times a week uh, unless something comes up and I can't. Um, also, if you want to help support the channel, there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, there's a coffee link in the description down below where you can do a one-time tip if that's your thing. Uh, also, if you want to become a patron over on Patreon, I've got a few different levels of uh, patronage that you can sign up for there. I will say, though, that the $5 level will give you access to a patrons-only Discord server. Um, and I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Um, I guess there is uh, merchandise down below this video, but with everything going on right now, uh, it's not shipping very quickly. So um, unless you're watching this after the COVID thing has settled down, maybe kind of gloss over that, but just know that it's there if you want to take a look at merch. So I think that wraps up everything I wanted to say about everything. So i uh, going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.